Hello, viewers. I've played Loot Rascals for about two hours now, and it's a roguelike game. There's some really interesting mechanics here, though, and uh, I think the first thing I need to address is the art style, though. It is very colorful, a little cutesy, but also kind of creepy, so don't let the the bright colors fool you okay it is creepy and bizarre and this game is really hard super hard oh my god so don't let any of that weird art stuff fool you i mean it's i think it's a good art style and i really like it but don't let that trick you okay that's a, it's a tricky trap they've got for you it's good good art style really hard game all right now that that's out of the way i think the Mechanics, since they're so different from, some of them are so different from roguelike games, let's start off with the very similar ones. The game wants you to beat it in one shot, start to finish. Um, so yeah, there you start off at the beginning with uh, very basic cards, and then you must get, or very basic equipment, and then you must get to the end of the game. That's pretty much how to sum it up. Pretty typical in the roguelike fashion. Also very typical is that each tile that I'm moving across is one turn. You might see the turn counter in the top right hand corner of the screen. And so yeah, each time I move, it switches and allows the other characters or other monsters on the screen to move. It's that is a very typical rogue um, mechanic. You can each move. You can move inside these tiles a little bit. There's a little bit of leeway there. It it is um, until you move to the next tile, and that may make it seem like it's a bit more real time. But initially, it's not. But having that leeway inside the tiles to move in real time opens up a few doors later on for this developer. They made an item that changes the game to be in real time. Basically, uh, it gives each yeah, real time. It gives each turn its own set amount of time before it switches automatically. So you don't. You can just stand there and wait, instead of having to move to a new tile for the turns to move. And that game, that, that to me, that makes the game so much harder. Uh, I think there are certain positions that you'd want to use that in, but I have not found them right now. I'm very. Um, I want the more. I want the extra time to really think about um, moving. So, tile-based for the most part, they added this day-night cycle. I'm sure you've noticed when I mentioned the uh, top right uh, part of the screen with the turn counter. Uh, there are, uh, it's a day-night cycle. Some turns are in the day, some turns are in the nighttime. That changes when certain monsters will attack first. If they have a blue icon over their head, they will attack second. And this is very important throughout the whole game probably the most important part of the game because if you're going to be somebody that very carefully thinks about planning the moves to make sure that you attack first then stacking attack is really important for you so moving with this time of day aspect is very strategic it's really important you know you'll often find yourself dancing with an enemy to make sure that you attack first. It'll be a little bit of going back and forth just to make sure that you get that first hit in so you don't die. It's a, it's a methodical system that you have to just be very thoughtful and careful with each move that you make. I think it's a very good system. It's, all, it's also really good for uh, learning a game. You can take as much time as you want to move. Uh, you can figure out the system in a way that just makes sense to you and you can have as much time as you want to think about the move it's just it makes it very much like chess i would say i always like this kind of aspect about rogue just the amount of time that you can take between uh, turns before moving to make sure that all of your items are correct you have enough time like there's no pressure i mean well it's stressful but there's no pressure to move which is good in this game though they added a 250 turn timer so that way it's stressful. They want you to finish this level in 250 turns. So there is a little bit of pressure to make the right moves and the correct moves. And that also makes you, that forces you to make bad decisions. And I think that's important because it opens up the door to, instead of it being a game where you have to clear every room and collect every item, like a lot of these games are, it makes it so that you have to be very good at 
fixing your mistakes. You have to be very careful. Like if you if you walk into an enemy and or you just you get in a situation where you can't get out of it and then you end up taking two hits or three hits health wise, you have to worry about that later and worry about those consequences. It's not just some you're not going to have the perfect run. There's no way you're going to have to handle your mistakes and it makes it more of a thinking game. I really appreciate this about this game. The gear system will also have you making difficult decisions. At first, it seems pretty easy with replacing the lower end gear with the higher up number of a gear, right? Sure. But later on, it requires a lot more planning. Some of the cards buff each other, buff other ones. You're going to have to make decisions on which kind of direction you want to go with, on which cards you want to keep and stuff like that. And they have negative effects if you put them in the wrong location. It requires a lot of thought. I mean, without the... If you had to do this under pressure, it would probably be way too hard. Uh, luckily, you have as much time as you want. You know, you're trying to build this set of cards to really work out for your character. And then a monster will drop a a card that gets attached to the to these cards to a like a, a chess piece or a um, or an attack item. Th this this card will give you uh, healing, teleportation, uh, ice blocks. You can create ice blocks on the level. And so it gives you these powerful skills that you have to permanently attach to another card. So you have to re really think about it, really choose the correct one. And, you know, you're going to have a unique run every time trying to create these correct layout for your, your, your gear. It's... It's interesting, and I like it very much. I think it builds upon the whole complicated mess of making sure that you're thinking about this game 100% of the time as you play it. It is not a simple game to get through. It is a simple game to understand, but the, all of these complex systems are going on. You're really going to try and min-max your character, and you're going to want to make sure that you have the right attack. You might be swipping, swipping swapping. You might, might switch out cards depending on what you're going to do next. There are some really high attack characters here that you need to break through. And you might equip more, because you know you're going to attack first, you might equip cards that will ha give you the attack power to defeat that character first. And that is a really cool system. It is very strategic. You can really customize the cards to your play style that if you're going to be methodical and, like I said, make sure that you attack first, you're going to want to equip attack, more attack cards than defense cards. It's as simple as that. There is one more interesting thing that the developers added. It's items. And I did talk about this a little bit earlier when I said there are items that change the time from turn-based or tile-based turns to time-based turns. So it makes it more of like a, a you're playing a game that runs automatically. These items take up a slot for stats and... You really have to be. You have to really have to decide if your that item is more beneficial than five or three attack. I mean, three attack is a pretty big deal. It might be the difference between killing a monster or getting hit once and losing life. And life is very valuable in this game. It's just a cool system. I think it requires a ton of thinking and thought, and those two are the same things. This game also has something I'm going to call fringe multiplayer. You can't interact with the with any characters directly. You never just interact with them at all. But when when you die, a monster steals your cards. Those cards go into somebody else's game. They find your card. They choose to either send it back to you or keep it. If they keep it, there's a there's I think something bad happens. I haven't kept any cards. If you keep it, something like appears in your game and then uh, I think a negative effect happens. But you do get that awesome card and it might be a really good card, you know? And that is a really cool way to make sure that you, you have cards when those cards when you start off. It's a bit random, so you might have to do still do runs with a basic starter deck or your starter items. But you might also get mail items that... Uh, items back in the mail from other characters that help you on that run. I think it's a very, it's a good way to do it. It's very interesting, but it is a bit random. So um, while I would have preferred something a little bit more definite to help you get through the runs a little bit easier, it was, I think if there's a lot more people playing, it'll be a lot easier. I played in a time where not a lot of people are playing, so I did not get a lot of cards back. 
I'm excited to see where this game goes after launch and what, what kind of cards I can get back and probably make it a little bit easier to beat. It'll be nice. Overall, I don't know if these any of these systems are really that unique, but together it gives Loot Rascals a lot of unique and interesting gameplay, actually. The cute aesthetic, like I said, I mean, you know, might draw you into like a false sense of security or calmness or think that this game is easy, but it is it's absolutely not. You need to be 100% thinking about the game, very mindful of your actions. And I, I found some really tricky and interesting situations that I was in. And wondering what freaky monsters are going to turn up uh, in the next area. I'm still really curious about what they cooked up in the last final area. It must be crazy there. It is... The, the thought that went into the monster design here is genius. I love it. It's really cool. So on a scale of 1 to Woo, I give this game an incredibly grotesque, wonderful rating. And I, I know I plan to play more. So if you've watched this far, thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, how's it going? If you like this game, then I would suggest sharing out this video so other people can also find out about the game. And if you like this video, subscribe. That really helps out the channel, and I really appreciate it. Thanks.